everybody, I am Paige Ward. I'm from Maslin, Ohio. Hi, my name is Cullen Burke. I'm from Moscow, Idaho. We all left our homes in various parts of the world a few days ago and made this uh, journey down to the bottom of South America where we'll be embarking our vessel later today and setting off to the Antarctic. You're going to share something from the heart and you're going to share something fun or quirky about yourself. Something from the heart? Uh... I'm here out of love a lot to Antarctica. Heart's beating a little bit faster this moment. I'm super excited to be here. We should live in the present, not dwell on the past, and not focus too hard on the future. I once spent an entire year not buying anything new. Oh, I guess I, you know, I have this penguin, and I drink lots of tea. I've been going to Antarctica for too many years, but I haven't been there since, well, since early December. <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping it'll be a life-changing experience for the students, but also something that will have broader impact uh, in their communities, their countries, and, and uh, around the globe. Here's to us, and to all the people that helped get us here, and to an amazing, successful, and safe journey to Antarctica! very, very significant in parts of the story of Shackleton, particularly his 1914-16 expedition, the Endurance Expedition, which is the one we're going to talk about this morning. And just seven miles to the left there is where the rock comes into the sea is Cape Valentine, where they first landed. And directly ahead of us now is Point Wild, um, which the men called Point Bloody Wild. <laughs> it is a very desperate place. So this area here is where Shackleton's men wintered under upside turned boats on Point Wild. The chin strap penguins nesting here as their enemy in the water. Look at him now. He's going right, at, right to beside us. Captain Frank Wilde was in charge of the party while Shackleton, with a couple of men in a small little open boat, made the most fantastic journey in the world to come to South Georgia and get rescue for his people. Shackleton came ashore with the first boat and Worsley said it was really very moving 
because Shackleton was just staring with his white face staring at the beach. What he was doing, of course, was counting. And when 22 men appeared on the beach, his face lit up in this incredible smile. 28 men he'd taken in, 28 men he brought in. Every day sort of surprises you with something new. Penguins work surprisingly well in groups, I suppose. They travel in packs, so almost. We got all the all sorts of uh, behaviors today, uh, from uh, younger animals that uh, had just arrived and were copulating and trying to build a nest. Uh, we even got a few um, building nests. Uh, pretty healthy. A looking colony of adelies. Most of the adults were feeding their chicks. About 10 meters down is actually the, the temperature of, of the air year round. Right? So the mean annual temperature is found in glaciers about 10 meters below the surface. Wow, take a look at it. You can really yeah. feel the difference. No way. It's a very, very special place. It's probably one of the most magnificent wilderness sites in the whole world. Why is this place so special, Baileyhead? Because it's home to half a million chin straps, something like that. A great thing to do here, you guys, is just sit down somewhere and listen. I'm really in awe right now. Like, I can't believe that a place this beautiful and a place with this amazing beauty can exist on planet Earth. I feel like I'm in a dream. You know, this penguin walked right up to me. It pecked my friend's boot and tried to eat my fingers, <laughs> trying to take in everything I've seen so far today. And it, this has got to be one of the best trips I've ever been on. New Year's guys. Happy New Year's. Welcome to Deception. There you go, just spin around your neck.
Oh, it's coming right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we got. Whoa! That's what is crazy. it? Wow. What is it? This is a giant isopod that only lives in the water of the Arctic. Wow. Grain size for the surface layer is about uh, one millimeter by one millimeter. So this is uh, the Kerner ice cap. This little ice cap on this very tiny island. So Students on Ice have been here on this ice cap for several years in a row now. Since 2009, they've been uh, measuring the air temperature and also checking to see what, uh, what melt has been occurring on this ice cap. Okay, so you wanted to unpin that? Oh, oh. <laughs> Antarctica is the most beautiful place I've ever been in my life. Um, there's something about being here that feels surreal. The blue sky and the white mountains, it's just breathtaking. and I'm speechless when I see that. <laughs> well, when I first came here, they always said, well, this is the best classroom on earth, and I didn't know what they meant. And uh, as I meet all these experts and learn so much from them, and there is no walls, and it's been an excellent uh, experience uh, being able to learn from these wonderful, um, super knowledgeable people in such a lovely outdoor classroom. Because it's a little bit of hands-on. Now we drill ice cores, we tow plankton nets, we look in microscopes. Uh, we have a little bit of everything going on. The expedition for me is just a catalyst. It's a chance to spark them, to wake them up, to turn them on to, to, to topics and ideas. When you touch youth in the heart in particular, that shapes them. Uh, we, f we still want to fill their heads with lots of information, but it's when you touch them in the heart that change really takes place. And we see that transformative experience happening on these expeditions. I think the, the deepest part of the transformation is in the realization of community. Um, I think the first steps are probably realizing a lot of um, deeper personal things about themselves. But I, I hope that the final thing is that despite all that, all the work that they're doing on the inside, they realize they're not alone. And I think um, that transformation is soaking into me right now um, by just looking at the surroundings and how we need to protect this continent somehow. Kids have such a belief and hope in the future. And, and so they go home and they're talking and, and spreading the word to other people because they've been here and they've felt it. I mean, I, I deal with normal tourists, I deal with scientists, and don't get me wrong, they're good people. Um, but deal with these younger people is tremendous energy. You know, the energy and, and the hope for the future, to be quite honest. Um, you know, in them we see the future and in them I see hope. I mean, there's no planning for this stuff. It, it happens and you just got to be ready for it and even if you don't get it on camera you, you got it in your brain forever you, this is something that no one can ever forget not anyone